But I'm just getting ready to leave now for the next leg. It's now, I think it's Wednesday, <laughs> not sure. I just wanted to have a quick look round here. I mean, this is an amazing place. I mean, look at this. This is like a, a pull-off on the motorway hotel type place. And here you can get all the different types of noise. You know, if you're driving down the motorway and you're kind of like, hmm, fancy a knife. I'm going to get another knife. So, and it made me laugh because there was a couple sat there yesterday an old couple, you know, they'd obviously popped out. It's quite popular because, I mean, it's a nice restaurant, they do good food. And there's a little old couple there having a bit of carrot cake and a coffee and sitting down in the north corner. <laughs> so, I mean, if, if you're feeling a bit insecure on your trip, look, you can really go for any size machete just to make you feel a bit more secure. So, the rest of the hotel here is actually just incredible again these places on the side of the motorway that i've always found this through spain i mean look at that this is spanish motorway services and andalusia i love andalusia i love the people in andalusia and i find they're always really friendly so i needed some off-road parking last night so what did they do well, they said bring it in the restaurant and park it in the corner. <laughs> I mean, how fantastic. Look at this extra room that they've got. And there's the pan. And the good thing about that, look at that. Not, not a drop of aceite. No, not a drop of oil. So we're going to have a coffee, get the bike out, and our next leg is to go on to Cordoba today, where we're actually going to go into the city, uh, go into the town, and we're going to get some footage of the, I believe it's a, it's either a, a kind of a mosque, monastery place that's been there since the 1200s, but it was originally a Muslim mosque and then it turned Catholic. So I don't know, I'll get the history when I get there. So let's get strapped up, let's get going.
That has got to be the worst stretch of road I've found in Spain. It really has. It's like they took the surface off the road and scraped it with bare concrete, patchy concrete underneath. But they've done it for miles and miles. And, uh, no. <laughs> it's all the fun of the fair, isn't it? But where are we? Well, I'm about 40 minutes outside Cordoba. Um, just pulled over onto the services, or just off the motorway. And uh, we've just had ourselves a bit of tortilla and, and a coffee. So it's just a nice roll in now. I'm gonna gas up again. Um, I'm probably on about 120 euros in gas so far. I'm gonna say, I'm, once I hit Tor Cordoba, I'm about 240 kilometers out from the final destination in, in Huelva. Huelva, Huelva, I think it's pronounced. And then the ferry doesn't leave till midnight, so it's no good rushing. So I'm going to break that down into a trip into Seville and then from Seville into Helva. And then that way I, um, uh, I can kind of get a bit more footage there as well. Although I think I'm feeling it more than the bike now. I'm aching all over my arms, my neck, my low back. <laughs> but what it's all about the bike well all good some are about them engines over there look how beautiful that engine just sits here like that and the noise off the engine and the you can hear the swirling the mechanics it really is what biking's about Everything seems good. I think the chain is getting a little bit loose, but we should be fine. We're not intending now to really push it hard. We're just gonna take our time and just roll these last two, 300 kilometers out. So, okay, let's get on. could be the end of the road we've uh, arrived in Cordoba I've just got here so that was a tough 
a really tough bit of road from um, Villa Robledo to here. That they've they've completely scraped that section of the motorway, and for a hundred and twenty kilometres, it's just relentless, relentless. Uh, the bike now has developed a knock-in on the primary drive side. I'm just, I've called Andreas to see what he thinks from what research I've done and from my knowledge of the bikes anyway, is the, I think it's the drive, the drive chain, the primary drive chain. It's a question of, I keep going. Oh, fuck it all. Or do I call the rescue vehicles and the last 240 kilometers we go on the back of a truck? I mean, that just don't seem right to do that. Oh, God. I just don't know what to do now for the best. What I am going to do, I'm going to see what it's like in the morning because I think it seems to develop under heat. So as the bike gets hotter and hotter through the day, the chain obviously gets hotter and hotter and it gets looser and looser. I'm not actually riding that much. And if I do one trip tomorrow, instead, it might be better that I'll do two short trips and I could do, get out early starts when it's cold. So the bike's running colder. See how my arms slowly get dropping with the camera, because <laughs> I've got no energy there. But then, uh, <laughs> then what I could do is possibly make those last 240 kilometers, 120 a day, get out in the morning when it's cold, run the bike an hour and a half flat out, straight there. But the, the, the thing is, is, when there's tension on the chain, the chain ain't knocking. It's only knocking when it's kind of sitting in traffic or something like that. So the thing to do is go as fast as I can and as hard as I can, keeping as much tension on the chain for as long as I can. Motorhead trap there, fast and loose. We want it fast and tight. Let's see, let me have a whiskey and a bottle and I'll decide. Right, let's get going. I'm going to have some dinner, right? I've come into this hotel and they're a bit snobby in here. And they have uh, kind of looked me up and down when I came in. I mean, it's not surprising. It's a lovely room. It's a lovely hotel. So I've turned up, air like the rabbit mad rooster, turned up on the rooster, knocking its head off. And they're like, Jesus Christ, who's let him in? But I thought, I'll tie myself up, go down, have a nice glass of red wine, a nice bit of steak, and uh, show them how us biker types can be well behaved. Who knows? Right, we need to sit at the cheap tables. The what? What's this? Ah, Bally, sit down, see, no problem, I see. It's a shame, really, because we've been from Barcelona through everywhere, and then we've come to this one. And I don't know whether maybe it's the biker thing. I'm not too sure. But uh, we pulled the American Express Platinum out, and he's had a meltdown on the till because he don't know what to do now. And he still can't take the card to credit to the account. So I have no idea. I'm going to have um, a meal. We're going to have um, some Rivera de Duero, which is the region's wine from this area. Eh, uh, Espanol is beer, no problem. Espanol? Sí, sí, perfecto. Um, para vivir un vaso de Rivera de Duero. Ah, okay, <laughs> vale. We're going to try the, the local one, which happens to be my favorite wine in the world. So to be in the middle of now 
the actual region and if previously in the video you'll probably have seen as we were riding through this area we were going through the vineyards we were going through the actual production areas of that wine and you could actually smell it in the air it was fantastic I'm a little bit disappointed that I'm being treated a little bit like a third class citizen because I'm a biker. I thought the world had got over that, you know. But, you know, who knows. But let, let's see how we get on. Like I say, the Platinum cards give them a meltdown. So now they don't know what to do because they should have given me kind of surge service and everything when I give them the Platinum card. So um, we'll let American Express deal with that. <laughs> This is the local wine. This is their house wine, which is, of course, we better did well. So the smell is just as always, and it doesn't need to be expensive with this wine. I've had um, some very expensive Viga Sicilia, which is a very expensive winery. And I've also had a very basic one called Ito. Uh, that's with a H, Hito, but pronounced Ito. And that wine is very, very good. This is a local. How special to be sitting in the most famous wine region of the world with a 1950s panhead outside, about to be served, hopefully, a nice dinner, not, not a peasant's dinner. <laughs> we'll see, I might, I might get soup with a, a lump of chorizo in it. But let's see, okay, the jury's out. Maybe I've just taken it all wrong. Cheers, everybody, fantastic. Mm.